I want to address a very, very important matter this afternoon. And that is a key to the doors that are usually closed. When we walk in the path of life, we find many doors that are sealed, many doors that are closed. The opener or the one who opens those doors is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, a person's rizq or a person's sustenance. Sometimes one is suffering in terms of wealth. They have debt. They don't have a good job. Their salary is not sufficient. Sometimes we have a health matter. Sometimes we have matters in our own homes, a social matter with our children, with our spouses, with our own parents, with our brothers and sisters, with our in-laws, uncles and aunts. We are trying to resolve the matter, but nothing is happening. So the door seems to be closed. However, there is a way of opening the door. And that way is taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a very, very simple way. But many of us take it for granted. You know, shaitan, he works on us so hard that the simplified things that Allah has kept easy, he comes to us and he tells us, meaning shaitan tells us, this is too easy. It cannot be the solution. You need to do something more than this. Yet Allah says that is the solution. The solution is very simple, but it requires continuity. You do not just read Salah because today you are sick and expect to be cured tomorrow morning. It doesn't happen. You cannot call out to Allah, make dua and supplicate to him now that you have a financial problem and you expect someone to drop down two million ringgits tomorrow morning. It cannot be so quick. Yes, Allah can do it, but he won't because the condition that your heart is in when you are in need is far softer than when you are not in the desperate need. Subhanallah. When a person is sick and ill or they have financial issues, don't they go to the masjid early? Don't they call out to Allah? Don't they cry tears to Allah? Don't they say, Oh Allah, the adultery I committed, forgive me for it. I won't ever do it again. The alcohol I drank, forgive me for it. I won't ever do it again. The gambling I engaged in, Oh Allah, I won't do it again. But Oh Allah, I now have a big problem. I want you to help me, please. Ya Allah. The heart is soft. We've forgiven. We have created peace between us and Allah. So Allah, through his love and his mercy, sometimes holds us in that condition for a long period of time because he knows this worshiper of mine is so close to me today because he is sick, because he has a problem. If I were to give him back what he is asking for, maybe he might forget us completely. So Allah keeps us in a certain condition. His mercy, it's his mercy. However, there is a key to these doors to open them one by one. And that key is very simple. It is called Astaghfirullah. That's all. That's a key. Astaghfirullah is a key to a lot of the closed doors that we have, if not all of them. Many doors are closed in our lives. To open the door, you need the key known as Astaghfirullah. What is the meaning of Astaghfirullah? It means, Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Forgive me. That's the meaning. With us as Muslimin, we have a misunderstanding. We think that only when I know that I've committed a sin, now I need to say Astaghfirullah and I need to repent. No, it is not only confined to when you commit a sin. Even if you have not committed any sin according to you, you need to still go through with Astaghfirullah. It is the key to the doors of the goodness of this world and the next. This is why you and I, we believe firmly that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sinless and spotless and he was perfect and he is the best creature of Allah, the most noble of all prophets. We believe that. Yet if you go into his life and his words and his statements, the hadith says he used to seek the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala more than 70 times a day and sometimes 100 times a day according to some of the narrations. Why? Why does someone who is spotless, sinless, perfect need to say, I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, when there is nothing to forgive? Have you ever thought of that? It is because Astaghfirullah is the key.
to the doors of goodness of this world and the next. Whatever you want in your life, ask Allah's forgiveness and ask him in a way that you mean it. Do not just sit in one sitting and say Astaghfirullah a hundred times or a thousand times without knowing what it means, without concentrating. Even if you say it once, understanding it, realizing it, it's more powerful than having sat and recited it so many times without any form of concentration. This is why we say, use your own language, whether it is English, whether it is Malay, whether it is Chinese, no matter what other language it may be. If you are finding difficulty in understanding Astaghfirullah in Arabic, say it in your language. Oh Allah, forgive me. You will feel the power of it. Oh Allah, forgive me. Repeat it when you are walking into the masjid, when you are walking out of the masjid, after your salah. Repeat it when you are in your car, when you are in the public transport, when you are at home, when you are in the kitchen, when you are about to eat, when you are dressing, when you are, you know, doing anything you are doing, when you are at work, as you walk, as you talk, Oh Allah, forgive me. Repeat this a hundred times a day. It will open the doors of all the difficulties you are facing.